for Metallica, I have to translate what I think they should sound like. What do I think they should sound like? And then through knobs, buttons and speakers, I have to create Metallica. People are sort of amazed when they hear how loud Metallica can sort of sound. Well, it's kind of what I do. <laughs> That's kind of what I've learned to do. And use all the frequencies. When you have holes or big pockets in the sound that are missing, you lose like a, a perceived volume. When you use all the frequencies in the correct proportions, it sounds full and it's a full range and it just sounds more powerful and it does give the impression of being loud. I always try and attain the picture that's in my mind. Now, of course, I've been doing them so long that that picture's pretty cast in stone. Metallica music dictates that there's a, a good solid low end or it just doesn't work. So the picture that I've honed over the years as their sound engineer is one with a lot of sub. It's not just a tom-tom roll with Metallica, it's a feature. I had a conversation with John Mayer and I said, John, we walk the, we're walking the wrong path with these PAs. We used to have these old PAs that had an amazing punch at like, you know, 60 hertz and even 70s and 80s and all that. And all right, they didn't do the 30s and 40s very well. But we've kind of lost something with the line arrays. We, they don't come at you like they used to. You have to do it all with the sub package. And it used to be more tight and punchy. And he's like, yeah, it's true. It, it, it did change when the line arrays came. So he went away, bless him, and he made the Leo system. <laughs> so now you do have punch from the array and you have the sub package as well. Really the best of both worlds. If you go to a concert and there isn't an awful amount of low end around and the kick drum is just a normal kick drum, okay, you can still hear it, it all sounds okay. But if you want to really excite an audience, you want to feel the music. So something we discovered many, many years ago is that it's very important to, to get the beat across, so to speak, the big kick drums, which is something I've always sort of championed the cause. With the 1100, what happens is you have huge floor toms but then the kick drum is allowed to go that little bit further. So it does actually complete the picture. You know, you've got this do 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 dum 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 and then duff. Fantastic. It, and the, the 1100s give you the power to do that and the bandwidth and the handling that they can do. It works with bass guitar and stuff like that. You, you have to be able to get enough of the bass frequencies in, not sub frequencies to make the bass guitar sound full. Otherwise, you're gonna have this huge kick drum with a very thin bass guitar and that just makes the kick drum sound out of context. So you need to be able to meld the bass guitar in with the kick drum. So you need to have that punch frequencies as well as the sub frequencies. But I have to be honest, the 1100s in Columbia Bogus are just, I actually had to turn them down. And that's so rare for me, everybody laughs at me when I turn the subs down because I'm kind of a bit of a bass monster, you know, I do like that kind of thing. And I can honestly say, I've never heard a sub like that, ever. It's like having the sub bass that you would expect in a movie theatre. This open-ended air in the super sub, that's just fantastic. But and normally those kind of things can't handle much pressure. They'll do that big ambient sub thing, but as soon as you ask them to do a big peak, they're not so keen. But that 1100 does it all. The spectrum is there. It's like having a blank canvas now, but where before you could only paint on half of it, now you can paint on the whole thing. <laughs>